All right, what are we playing this week then? So this week I thought we'd attempt to complete F Zero for the Super Nintendo. So this was a very important release for the SNES. It was actually a launch title in Japan, and it uses the Super Nintendo's Mode Seven features. Some of the most impressive things about it at the time: its scaling and rotation effects. Do you have any experience with the game at all? Uh, a little bit, yeah. But we did used to play the uh, GameCube yeah. version quite a bit, didn't we? Yeah, so. I'd say both of us are more we're more um, experienced with the GameCube version mm. than the original. But I have played it a little bit over the years. Mm. Do you want to go for it then? Yeah, let's stick it on. Right, so you ready then? Yeah, let's go. Did you pick Captain Falcon? Captain Falcon. He's sort of the figurehead of the series, really, isn't he? Yes, he is. Got on standard mode. And Captain Falcon was actually originally designed to be the figurehead of the Super Nintendo itself, but some stage they changed their mind and put him in this instead. And, uh, you know, it was to the benefit of the series, really, wasn't it? Yeah, definitely. So, obviously, the game's a racer. The, um, the B button makes you accelerate. The Y button makes you break, and the A button is actually the booster. But um, you sort of get you pick up boosters every time you do a lap. So at the moment we don't actually have any. You might see that I'm sort of tapping the accelerator when we take the corners. So if it's a quite a tight corner, sometimes you can skid off, and tapping the accelerator stops you from skidding into the walls, basically. On top of that, you've got the left and right triggers, which help you take really tight corners. And uh, unlike most racing games you can sort of take damage and you just blow up and have to start the race again but um, there's sort of pits at the beginning and the end of the stage there's one car up here so here you, you sort of drive around in those and they just give you your health back and there you have it these mode 7 games were really impressive actually at the time when this came out I mean they had sort of more advanced polygonal 3D games at that stage already, like Hard Driving and Stunt Car Racer. Stunt Car Racer. <laughs> but um, there was always a lot of trade-offs with those types of games at that time because home, the hardware of the home couldn't really deal with them. They couldn't really do the 3D justice. And they're either quite low frame rate or there's, like, there's obviously there's no textures on the polygons, so they're quite low on detail. Mm. Whereas this, is quite, this has some quite good trade-offs really, doesn't it, this sort of method? Definitely. Because it's uh, obviously the frame rate's fantastic, 60 FPS originally. But um, other than that, it's quite detailed as well. You've got a nice background. There's some texturing on the, the sides of the course here as well, isn't there? Mm -hmm. So there's definitely some trade offs between this, but the perspective isn't as good as those 3D games. It doesn't feel as real, does it? You know? No. It does feel kind of flat. Most of the games at this time were still using sort of this cheating raster method where they would just have like a pre-drawn road and they would just warp it to the left and the right to do turns and they'd have like alternating bars at the side of the roads that were just alternating colours to sort of make it look like you're moving forwards and there were a lot of limitations with that method for example you couldn't do U-turns on those because obviously you're just you're just skewing it left and right whereas obviously the Mode 7 method here you, there's U-turns everywhere so the kind of courses that they could do were more more complex really aren't they yeah. you know hey I think it's the last lap though it is oh <laughs> you dirty <laughs> uh, he would have done it to me if I didn't do it to him <laughs> so weird. so dishonourable <laughs> Not much of an ending for each uh, set of courses, mm, is no. it? Apparently the developers were really into the Tim Burton Batman movie as well from a year earlier. So they reckon they sort of took some style influence from the, from the Batmobile and such. I guess you can see they've got the, uh, the Batman style jet boosters on the back of the car, haven't they? You know. And the high wings as well at the back. Mm. Yeah. You what? He landed on his head, I think. Oh. I think I might have used a boost by mistake then. Yeah, you did. I <laughs> don't know how though. I think I caught the button with my uh, 
My finger. Uh, it's your hand now. Yeah, I'm, I think I caught the bone with my finger. I don't know how. Yeah. If you boost it, you'd probably jump that corner. Hmm. Be a bit dangerous, though. You. you told me to try and do yeah, that. Yeah, you could, <laughs> but you went way too far. So whilst this is a pretty original game, it does look to me like it takes some influence from Atari Stun Runner, which was a game that was quite popular in the arcades a year earlier. Just the, sort of the way it looks and the way that you've got the boost pads on the ground and the jump pads and such, it just sort of it feels like it's sort of influenced by that game. But um, it's very different as well because there was a lot of vehicular combat sections in that in that game. But uh, funnily enough, Stun Runner actually has even more similarities to F Zero X because there's these sort of tube sections in it. Yeah. So parts of the course you can sort of go up the sides of a tube and such, hmm. which obviously was uh, introduced into F Zero X on the N64. I think there's definitely a little bit of influence there. There's still quite, you know, there's still quite a few differences between the games, though. And Stun Runner didn't get very good ports on the, in the home either. Well boost. Sorted. King class. Oh uh, shit. And I missed bing, it. Bing, 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 bing. <laughs> Blast. Bing. Oh. They are sort of like bumper cars, really, aren't they, as well, in this? There's, oh, boing, you scumbags. they are not even racing. <laughs> Damn Why public. Are you there? <laughs> oh. Is this the last lap? No, there's another one after this. Oh, he's right behind you. Oh. Your rival is right behind you. Don't miss it. Yeah. Hey. Well done. It's getting a little bit tense for yeah, me. Well, it was a bit hairy. <laughs> oh, this is the one with the booster in it. <coughs> this level has a shortcut in it, but I'm not sure if I should tell you. Yeah, tell me. The next jump. You go straight and pull back as much as you can. That was a mistake. I shouldn't. I was there. No, you can't touch anything but the blue section. Oh. Can I have another go? Yeah. I can okay. do that. Now I know it's coming. Once, once you got that bit down, it's all right. But yeah, now I know it's coming. Definitely, I'll get that. We got to be a bit wary now because we've only got two lives, one life. This no, we've got one, one life. The next life yeah. afterwards. Which means that I've only got one try to do the final level, which. The final level is not actually that easy. I would rather have all the life still. Yeah, it'd be fine. I'll do it this time. Oh, get yeah, away. Nope, missed that. Okay, I'm not going to take it. I've not got speed. Try it in the next one. Right, I'll try it this time then. Because I'm going straight now. But that's perfect, yeah? Should be. Uh... Hold him back. That's it. Hey. Easy. Yeah, when you know it's done, it's not too difficult, really. The only thing is if you're like going towards it, someone nudges you. Mm. Another life. Good. Now I can do it again. No more boosts. Oh well. Boosh. Sorted. Right, the last track, and it's the one that gives me the most difficulty. <laughs> You've got two lives, shut up. Hopefully. Well, three lives, technically. We can get this done oh. now. Oh, 
Oh no, I'm going to be over here, I think. Really? Yeah. Oh, then she can get around that corner. Also, the AI cars only ever go down the middle. Oh, okay. So if you're going down the side, it takes away the chance of them Hitting screwing you. you over. What's that thing? Is that deadly? It's dragging you towards it. Oh, I remember now, you don't get a pit on this. If you take the pit, it, it basically everyone passes you on that turn. Oh. Here's the shield that you've got to worry about on here. Alright. I think we're alright to be honest. That was bad. Powering down. Oh. Steady. Should be fine. Yeah. Yeah, you're all good. Nice. Just offset yourself, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. Allow the drag to pull you in. There you go, all done. Sorted. All done. And that's the end of that chapter. Yeah, one of the most disappointing things about this game actually is the ending because it just, this is sort of inadequate really, isn't it? It is, especially for this time. And if you do the game on Expert, it just says, now try the game on Master and it opens up a Master mode. If you do the game on Master, from what I can remember, it basically just says thanks for playing from the team and Captain Falcon or whoever you're playing as. And that's it. So even if you go to all that work of doing it on Expert Master, it's still not really giving you very much. Mm. It's a bit of a shame. Okay, then, what do you think of the game, then? Well, I say this is a really important release, isn't it, really, for the Super Nintendo. And it's, like we said before, it really shows off for the features of the hardware. This is the most impressive part of the Super NES when it came out, was these Mode 7 graphics effects. And this does a fantastic job of really showing them off. And it's just so much smoother than a lot of the games from this time, you know, the racing games. And you need to have fast food gameplay for this mm. kind of futuristic racer. It's one of the most important of this sort of subgenre of racing games as well, really. You know, we said before games like Stun Runner already existed, but this really popularised futuristic racing games in general, really, in a lot of ways. Yeah, I think Wipeout yeah. owes a debt of gratitude to this game. Definitely. Yeah, I think most of the, most of those types of games do, really, to an extent. Other than the graphics and the effects and stuff, which are first rate, the music is pretty good as well, isn't it? Yeah. It's not as optimal as you know optimal use of the Super Nintendo sound chip as later games you, you would hear. You know the fidelity. But it's a launch title. The fidelity would be much higher on the later Super Nintendo game, but yeah, the the uh, it's a launch title, so it's sort of getting to grips with this mm. stuff. And the compositions are good. There's a lot of memorable tracks in there. Mm. Obviously, a lot of them were reused in games like Smash Brothers as well. So, Sort of, yeah. uh, obviously they've stood this test of time mm -hmm. so what did you feel about the game then i really like the game i really it's, it's right up my alley really because it's that really fast paced if you make the tiniest little fuck up you are gonna yeah. smash into a wall and that'll be the end of it kind of game and i really enjoy getting through those really neat and tidy <laughs> sharp corners and the graphics are really nice really nice and colorful yeah really good backgrounds on the games and stuff like that it really does use the mode 7 to its utmost doesn't it yeah for the, the time it's, definitely it's fantastic well it's a bloody launch title yeah some some later games used mode 7 they had sort of heels in it and stuff mm. i'm not even sure how they how you do that so much later on the this sort of mode 7 stuff would become a little bit more advanced but it was never as fast and fluid as this i think yeah. you know even later on mm. gameplay wise as i've already said fantastic really great get to grips mm. nipping it out of those corners like you said it's satisfying to take a corner well isn't it it this really game? is especially when you get through like a really tight section of corners and you don't really slow down because you've got everything the precise apex of each yeah. corner it controls well actually it as does. well doesn't yeah, it? it really does something else we haven't mentioned actually is the super nintendo introduced the, the side buttons didn't it mm. so obviously this game a launch title it uses the shoulder buttons quite well as mm. well yeah it really does it gives you that extra option doesn't it um Gameplay great, graphics great, music really nice, yeah. memorable tracks. As you said, it has stood the test of time. Even in the later F Zero games that are on the GameCube and further, they still use the same music. Yeah, which is really really nice to see. So very memorable tracks. Um, what's lacking in the game? The ending. The ending's awful. Yeah, it really is. It's, there's no excuse for it in this, at this time, really. So what are you going to score it then? 
Well, I've got to give the game a full five out of five. This is this is an important release for the Super Nintendo. It's a launch title and it really showed off the system. And it's very much ahead of a lot of the stuff that was available at the time. Where are you going to score it then? Five. Yeah. There's no <laughs> doubt, is there? There was never any doubt in my mind that this was a five out of five game. Yeah. It, even before playing it, this, the, the mystique behind it, the one thing that lets it down a little bit is a presentation at the end with the yeah. no ending. But they were probably on a tight schedule being a release title, so... You know? Yeah, either that or it's just a uh, memory constraint, yeah, possibly, because definitely. they've got to hold all this track in memory, they've got to hold all the animations for the cars in memory and such. Mm. It showcased the Mode 7 brilliantly, it introduced us to Captain Falcon, which I love because I love playing in Smash Bros. Yeah. Absolute classic, 5 out of 5. Okay, guys, that's F-Zero for this week, absolute classic. Yeah, I had a lot of fun playing it, actually. Yeah, really great fun playing it. So if you liked it, guys, give us a like. Give us a comment, tell us what you think about the game, and subscribe to the channel. We're always releasing great new content like this. So we'll see you next week with another game, guys. Take care. See ya.